Welcome back to the green yard. Today is a beautiful spring afternoon. I know we're doing a lot of videos in the spring. That's because it's right in the beginning of April here in Phoenix, Arizona. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon currently, and we're over here in our food forest part of the green yard. And today we're planting one of our tropical trees. This is a long end. To be specific, it is a, oh, I know I'm gonna say it wrong, but it is a B.I. Pew long end tree. And I'll go ahead and put that in the uh, description so that way you can say it correctly there. Um, I know there's a bunch of different varieties of long end. This is one that I had found at the local nursery. And I figure I might as well give it a shot here in the food forest part of the green yard. Long ends do like the afternoon shade. They also like to uh, have a little bit of cold protection the first year from from what I understand and then after that first year they're pretty good in terms of our weather here in Phoenix they can survive with that you know mid 30 degree temperature very similar to a lychee tree I do have a lychee tree actually right over here and if you don't know what a long in is it's very similar in fruit as well to a lychee it has kind of a uh, outer hard shell and then on the inside it has almost like a grape the inside of a grape consistency uh, inside of that so I'm excited to have the long in here I'm excited to go through this planting video so let's go ahead and get this guy in the ground here we go Uh, I wanted to do that with all my tropicals this year. It just didn't happen, uh, time constraints. So uh, this hole though, I did prep. So I went ahead and actually this long end right here is sitting on top of the hole. Let's move them over. So I went ahead and I prepped it. Uh, I mixed our um, nursery soil, that really well draining tropical tree nursery soil that I brought here in Phoenix, as well as our native clay soil. I uh, then on top of that added our mulch, our wood chips that you can see here, and a little bit of this uh, grass. This is dried grass clippings, so I added that as well. Uh, and then I just kind of let it sit here. We've had a couple irrigations, so we've had some flood go into it. Hopefully those wood chips have started to break down a little bit, uh, so that way that soil and everything can start in the process of breaking down and adding some nutrition back into that soil for our long entry here. So let's go ahead and put this guy in the ground. I'm just gonna grab my shovel and I'm just gonna uh, kind of scoop away this mulch off the top. So we'll just kind of scoop away the mulch as best we can. Kind of get that mulch out of the way here. some of those grass clippings here in the way not too bad though seems pretty rooted out so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, you know squish the pot a little bit give it a tug seems like a pretty rooted out tree although it's showing me that it's really not looks like the soil just cracked at the worst possible spot so let's Nudge this guy along. Try to get him out of here. The least possible damage to the roots. Might actually end up cutting the bucket. So I try to save all my pots, but sometimes, you know, the tree's health is more important than the pot. So let's just go ahead and uh, just cut this guy out of here. 
that's gonna help keep everything intact that whatever root ball is available it's gonna keep it more intact than it otherwise would be just by cutting along the pot really getting it out of here I'm um, gonna give it a better chance of survival so looks like I have most of that intact root ball now so I'm just gonna kind of ease it out of here as best I can Woo. and set it in its new home all right pretty good there let's get some of that additional dirt in got a lot of uh, roly polies as I like to call them all over here those are actually really good for your soil if you see those that's a really really good thing also have a lot of earthworms here as well I actually find one for you here he is got a lot of earthworms here too really help and break down that soil that's all part of that pre pre-mixed soil uh, and why I like to do that in the beginning for my uh, for my tropicals when I put them in I actually have another ball just full of worms here not sure if you can see that or not um, but definitely trying to get those guys back in the dirt as best we can have them continue to break down that uh, that soil we want that healthy 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 broken down soil here good so now let's go ahead and bring back some of this mulch here grass all the stuff that we moved before all that good stuff that's being broken down I'm gonna bring that back over top of this just have it continue to uh, break down this soil make it even healthier for the tree I'm gonna go ahead and add in my sulfur. Just add it all around the plant here. Really help lower that pH of that soil. So it's all sprinkled around there, all around my longin. Also gonna go in and add in my, uh, my azomite. We talked about before on this channel, this is a uh, rock dust. Gives some of those trace minerals that they otherwise wouldn't get. I always like to add that to my original planting around just on top of the sulfur there. All right, one of the other important things that we've talked about before on the channel here is that first watering, really, really water in all of that sulfur, all of that azomite, try to get it to mix into the soil, into that mulch as best you can. Over time, it will end up, you know, um, uh, falling apart and absorbing into the soil uh, into that mulch I just like to have it in the mulch there uh, that way I know it's not going to wash off for me especially uh, when I have flood irrigation just giving me a little bit of peace of mind that it's actually staying here with the plant and not rushing off somewhere else in the yard all right so there we have it I went ahead and planted my new long end tree into the food forest part of the green yard we're underneath those two uh huge you know 60 to 80 year old mulberry trees definitely providing some really good afternoon shade for this long end uh, now normally i would take out this nursery stick i'm just not in a position right now to stake it properly so i'm going to leave it for a few days um it's okay to leave that nursery stick in for a few days, even a few weeks, if you can't properly stake it, because at least it's getting a little bit of support. This long entry, for example, uh, is, is a little bit on the flimsy side, as we saw, it's not quite rooted out, so it's really not in there with its root ball. Definitely want to properly stake this uh, when I'm able to, which will hopefully be here in the next few days. So as always, 
live green, plant lots, and of course, have fun. We'll see you next time. Oh,